Chromatography Theory, Chapter 4, Peak Integration Theory. This educational video has been brought to you by Chrome Perfect, the leading independent chromatography data system. In this chapter you will learn the entire process and theory of chromatography peak integration. We are using Chrome Perfect version 8, however the academic theory and processes that are discussed are universal. In part 1 we look at the first stages of the integration algorithm, peak detection and peak integration. Part 2 will cover various timed events within Chrome Perfect which allows for more accurate and automated chromatography analysis. Peak identification and peak quantification are covered in Part 3. In this video we will be using Chrome Perfect to demonstrate the topics being discussed. We will also review some academic images which are fairly low resolution, these are not indicative of Chrome Perfect output. However they are useful to demonstrate some of the points of discussion. If you would like more information about our software, please visit our website at www.chromeperfect.com or call 973586851. Part 1, Peak Detection. As discussed previously, chromatograms contain not only peaks, but noise and drift. The term peak detection refers to the process by which peaks are identified in the presence of noise and drift. Because of the enormous variability in peak height and width, this is not a simple task. Consider the chromatogram in the following figure. The chromatogram trace shows a major bulge with several smaller but more rapid variations superimposed. Should this chromatogram be interpreted as a series of narrow incompletely resolved peaks, as indicated by the baseline in the plot on the left? Or should it be interpreted as a single broad peak with superimposed pump noise, as indicated by the baseline in the plot on the right? There is no way to distinguish these two situations by referring to the chromatogram by itself. Additional information must be supplied. Chrome Perfect uses two parameters to distinguish peaks and noise. The peak detection threshold parameter, or simply the threshold, determines a minimum area, and the peak width parameter determines a minimum width. Candidate peaks must exceed this area and width to be considered further. Fluctuations with less than this area or width are considered noise. The peak width parameter is an estimate of the expected peak width and must not be confused with the measured width of actual peaks. The proper value for the threshold is determined by the amount of noise on the chromatogram trace. Because noise varies over a wide range, the threshold is a logarithmic quantity, specified as a dimensionless number in the range minus 12 to plus 24. Fractional values are legal, but rarely necessary. A threshold of zero corresponds to a minimum peak area of about 50 microvolt seconds, and the minimum value doubles every time the threshold is incremented by one. In practice, the user simply adjusts the threshold as necessary. If the baseline is littered with tiny noise peaks, then the threshold should be raised, and if small peaks are not detected, because they have no baselines, then the threshold should be lowered. The proper value for the peak width parameter is determined by the full width at half height of the narrowest peak in the chromatogram. The peak width is specified in minutes. The baselines in the figure correspond to peak width parameters of 0.03 and 0.60 minutes. Peaks that are less than half as wide as the peak width parameter will not be detected. Peaks that are much wider than the peak width parameter may or may not be detected. Wide peaks that only slightly exceed the threshold are usually not detected, but large, wide peaks that only greatly exceed the threshold are often detected regardless of the peak width setting. Therefore, when the signal-to-noise ratio is large, the peak width setting is not critical. The method file specifies the initial values for the threshold and peak width. In many cases, these initial values are suitable for the entire chromatogram. However, if the peak width varies systematically, as it often does in isocratic runs, it may be necessary to alter the value of the peak width parameter at particular retention times. The same is occasionally true of the threshold. Chrome Perfect supports timed events to alter these parameters at specified times. The minimum effective peak width is determined by the sample rate. 
Assuming that the peak width at half height is one half the baseline width, to have at least 10 data points across the full baseline width of the peak, the peak width at half height must be at least 5 sample intervals. Since the sampling rate S is given in samples per second and the peak width is given in minutes, the following formula gives the minimum peak width for any sampling rate. Peak width, minimum, equals 10, samples divided by peak, divided by, S, samples per second, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 60, seconds per minute, equals 1 divided by 12 multiplied by S. Example. The HP 5890GC supports a maximum sample rate of 20 samples per second. What is the narrowest peak that may be reliably detected? The minimum peak width is 1 divided by 12 multiplied by 20 equals 0.0041667. The peak width in the method file may be set to a smaller number, but it will have no effect. Looking at another way, the minimum sample rate is determined by the width of the narrowest peak. Sample rate, minimum, equals 10, samples divided by peak, divided by, peak width, minutes divided by peak, multiplied by 2 multiplied by 60, seconds divided by minutes, equals 1 divided by 12 asterisk peak width. Example, the narrowest peak is 0.05 minutes, or 3 seconds wide. What sample rate should be used? The minimum rate is 1 divided by 12 multiplied by 0.05 equals 1.667. Any sample rate over 2 samples per second would be adequate. As described in the following section on timed events, it is possible to alter the threshold and peak width values at specified times in the chromatogram. Peaks and clusters. In its simplest form, the peak integration algorithm sets peak start and end times by finding local minima. This is satisfactory for isolated peaks, but when a peak starts to elute before the previous peak has finished eluting, the local minimum, valley, between the peaks will not be at the baseline, as shown in the following figure. The baselines are drawn to the valley, and the peak heights and areas will be underestimated because the triangular region below these baselines will not be counted. To prevent this, peaks that are close to one another, relative to their own width, are assumed to overlap and are grouped together into clusters. Isolated peaks each have their own cluster. If there are several peaks in a cluster, then the baseline will be drawn under the entire cluster, and drop lines will be drawn from the valleys to the baseline, as shown in the following figure. Here the baseline is properly drawn so peak heights will be properly calculated and the entire area under the trace will be assigned to one peak or the other. The area is divided between the peaks by the drop line, which is located at the bottom of the valley. Purists will note that this division is not exact and that there is a net transfer of area from the smaller peak to the larger one. Despite this imperfection, the peak areas will be much more accurate than they are when the baselines are drawn to the valley. When the chromatogram contains a large solvent peak, it frequently happens that some of the early analyte peaks elute completely before the solvent peak has returned to the baseline. Such peaks are known as rider peaks because they are riding on the tail of the solvent or parent peak. Neither valley-to-valley -valley baselines nor a common baseline with drop lines is appropriate in this situation, as shown in the following figures. The valley-to-valley -valley baselines are correct for the rider peaks, but not for the parent peak. The common baseline with drop lines is not correct for any peak, since much of the area that belongs to the parent peak has been assigned to the riders. When Chrome Perfect encounters such peaks, it will thus skim them off the tail of the parent peak, as shown in the following figure. The integration algorithm is usually, but not always, smart enough to decide whether to treat the peaks as separate clusters or part of the same cluster, and whether to skim. The user may force the decision one way or the other using timed events, which are described in part 2. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more YouTube chromatography content and training videos. You might also want to follow Chrome Perfect on Facebook and Twitter.
If you would like to receive more information or a demonstration of Chrome Perfect, please contact our sales team by visiting www.chromeperfect.com or call 9735868551.